that's uh, my vision is to, again, I always start with basics, with the basics. We hear it generally, there's need for this, there's need for that, but we need to know, uh, and the school census will help us with this, identifying the schools, the number of schools, the number of secondary schools, the need in the classroom, the teachers that we need to train. So it's, it's a multifaceted um, vision to, to deliver on, and, but that's kind of my mindset in how I approach in, in indulging the, 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 the question that you asked. sure that I tour the counties 
to make sure I see firsthand um, what I've been told. How do young parents play, I mean, in the educational center of Liberia concerning the infrastructure embarrassment that we have? Have you done this? Yes, I have. Um, and it has informed what I know. And as I stated, I've read a lot of policy documents. Um, I've read a lot of donor engagements and projects that, that, that are being uh, currently uh, delivered. But it's nothing like seeing firsthand um, what the needs and challenges are. To then come back and say, well, Mr. Donor, you might have needs here, but from my assessment, these are the needs on the ground that we must address. So if you do your assessment and realize that the challenges are so huge, will you still continue to do that? Absolutely. I come from a village called Yoboma. You have to walk three hours and get to the school. The roads are very far. Have the teachers going there to teach, and you do not even have a bathroom. You take bath in the shallow bathroom that is able to charge, and you need to go there and teach the children in the village. And you pay him 10,000 or 20,000 at the right now. You cannot find any type of material around that area. The teacher will have to go to the farm, and government will not pay them on time. Ask that teacher to come to a bank where he need to pay more than his salary to get his salary. How do you intend to solve that problem? First, with the roads and the probability of the roads, we understand you know the rainy season poses challenges uh, for movement. So we we'll look to um, support in getting roads you know uh, repaired for students to get to school. Um, also, looking at salary commensuration. Training folks, placing them in classroom, but not having a, a structure for their payments based on where they're located is something that we need to look, that needs to be looked at. Because if someone is in a how to reach area, they should be um, incentivized and their stay there should be something that encourages them to do what they were, they were hired to do. But you can't have someone, in the, a teacher in the rural areas, struggling to upkeep and then be prepared mentally to go in the classroom. So these are areas that I plan on reviewing to make sure that it's addressed. You told us in the room that they didn't act in my project. Do you have any plans to work with the final ministry to bring it to the Because I didn't get a question and so on, said that they don't ask you. He said you were to work with the team. And I heard that you hear that second. And what about the challenge that we had here? We get huge projects in the education sector, and we real and we realize that and we realize that most of the money paid to the educational sector is not used. So, will you have the time to work with the finance ministry to act in miles of budget before we come before? Yes, I will, but I will follow um, the current protocols for budget submission as it, as it stands right now. But I certainly will look forward to making sure that we're reviewing um, the various budgets based on what is required in terms of support to those various areas, i.e. the primary education. The needs there are different. You're not going to create science labs, for example, in that area, right? So I will not support a project that will come to all education 
Dr. Jala Sekwe, Dr. Jasu Jala Sekwe, Education Minister of Destiny. We currently um, have 100, oh, excuse me, 1.429 million students in the school system. Um, early childhood stands at 230,515. Primary stands at 221, 
0.081. Junior secondary school stands at 63,058. And senior secondary stands at 39,696. I'll be asking you for the hard copy or soft copy of that information so we verify. But in the okay. interim, you also don't have any structures in Liberia to have a school building. Correct. Currently, there are physical schools across the country, 6,249 public community, private, and faith-based. Early childhood um, institutions stand for public institution at 2,284, with a total across community, private, faith-based at 5,768. engaging um, the finance minister of Minister of Finance to one not only ensure uh, resources and payments for these resources are made timely to be able to deliver resources to um, our rural areas. Getting around in town may be feasible, but planning to deploy resources in our rural areas requires time and it requires um, timeliness of the availability of the resources. So engaging is, is going to be my ask to, to weekly have a weekly meeting with the uh, Minister of Education to put these things um, you know, on his agenda to know and assess how we're moving along with them. There's a spoken here called Bridge. Have you heard about that? Yes, I have. What's the thing on it? Same transfer to our school system? Or what do you intend to do with it? Public, par public private partnerships, um, because of the enormity of the challenges in the sector, uh, public private partnerships are always good. However, they must be implemented in collaboration with education stakeholders, meaning our teacher unions um, and educational stakeholders, to ensure that whilst the good intentions are there to, de to, to come and deliver educational services in the country, that they are aligned with the expectations that we have as a nation for education. Well, Minister, during our childhood, 
There was a famous thing in Nigeria, an educational system with boarding school, black carrying, rate, so clinic mission, and you can name it, that test are all over the country. Today we had a fine with boarding schools in Nigeria. Do you intend to give incentive, or if there was a, a proposal, give incentive to encourage private school owners to invest in boarding schools? where they can have to begin again to instill discipline in our students, in our children, for a better future. Could you consider plans like that? That will certainly be something on the center that we'll have to study um, to make sure that uh, commitments that are made or spoken here are something that um, is not just talk. That is certainly something that we can commit to, to do it. But certainly to your question, yes, it's something that we can consider for study. The share my last question, um, before I close. A few years ago in Liberia, there was this great saying, what people say, I left my good job in, like, in America, and I came to sacrifice. It was a famous thing here. From your CV, it seems you are living a good job in America. Are you here to sacrifice, or are you here to serve? I'm here to serve. Um, I don't look at my country as weak. I'm here to serve. There are millions of other people that will have, you know, even been better chosen. So the fact that I'm here, I'm here to serve. Thank you, uh, my nominee. Like I said, uh, interacted with you before. And I believe that once uh, the vote is taken on the floor, which I will be voting for you, I'm sure you make the vote yourself. Our dedication. Please accept my congratulations.
that we give the indigenous sector. We want to say that. And I also want the public to know that because your qualification will be questioned, not because you know you don't have the degree and other thing, but the system you're working and the support you get in that system will question your competency. So you should be on the back of the Senate in this committee uh, to give you the support you need. That's what I'm about. Uh, can you just, just for the public, you got to know this uh, CV uh, is a public document. Uh, so that it speaks for itself. When you say that uh, you work at LIPA from 2016 to 2018, and you stay at director of uh, at the Delaware State University uh, up to 2016, what's the color period? What happened there? Was it in a month difference or so? Or? That's the question. So you have uh, in your CV, you have you work up to 2016 in Delaware, and then you also work from 2016 to 2018 in Nigeria. So what? Did you have overlap? Yeah. The time overlap was um, I took office in December of 2016 in Nigeria. Okay. Um, you, in your CV, you got uh, two bachelors in the same year. You can tell the public how it worked. Um, I completed two curriculum, so I did uh, dual majors at Rhode Island College. Uh, both the majors are Bachelor of Arts. Uh, the way they um, award your degree, if I had, for example, a Bachelor of Science and a Bachelor of Arts, I would have gotten two, two diplomas. But because both my um, degrees um, undergraduate were a Bachelor of Arts, that is why you have one diploma in there. Uh, but I, I was a student who dual major. Usually students um, would do a major and a minor, but I did two, two majors. Thank you. So, um, what does it read to you? www.desu.edu. Say that again. W-W-D-E-S-U-D-E-E-U. That's the university's website. What do you mean by that? Delaware State University in Dover, Delaware. I asked the question because I want the public to know that you are highly qualified for the job and because your information is public, it is not a secret. And you know exactly what you know. But I go further. Um, I don't know, but if you have answered any question I'm going to ask you, you don't have to answer because I will look at it. I mean, you look at the video later on, so you don't have to because of time. Uh, you have our data. I mean, you care to tell that you know you are just in terms of your origin and the origin and something else. Certainly, sir. I am born of Mr. Imos Obojala, senior, and Madam Ade B. Jala. My mother hails from Bolahu, the Vatante. My father, yes, so. No, I just have to put the thing that I can see all of them. Yeah, the reason, because the time, she, the question. Mr. Chairman, I said to the nominee, Mr. Chairman, I said to the nominee, if I ask a question and you answer, you should answer. Okay, okay, very well. I'm still thinking. Thank you. Okay, so uh, what do you think about a teacher working? Teaching science to be specific physics in River Gee County in Gwen, making twenty thousand dollars a year, and a teacher teaching physics now Gee W gives it. What do you think about that? Yeah, I'm going to 
So the both are in the same field, teaching science, right? And they are making the same. It goes back to this incentivizing we talked about earlier, with if you want to equip people and encourage them, you have to make it where the salaries are commensurate to conditions for which they're going to be passed to work. So certainly, um, I do think there's some structural issues there in terms of um, salaries that we need to look at. You also think that also um, justifiable means of corruption? The teacher will tell grade because in most of other countries, the teachers won't like. They have a problem with their like. But the teachers will say, you can't be from this time. We don't have to come to the board like whatever we point out. We don't see that it's a justifiable corruption. I mean, it certainly is. Um, and that's a challenge in our system. If we must set the standard, we have to set the standard not only for teacher performance but disciplinary actions uh, for teachers who will be caught doing that because it's a disservice to our students and this nation. Because we have to make sure we're gra graduating students through the academic pipeline that are prepared to take on the next level of education. Okay. Uh Okay, so do you trust the system where the person who should be paid a fee or the person who should be paid a fee to is the person that is paying the fee to him or herself in a system where major education and why? Why is the one that offers the service for our students to take the big test? Or why is the one that is receiving the budget line and is the one that is paying itself? What do you make of that? Do you think that why should be serving of those in major education so that we know the actual number of students that are taking the test, they are going to be budgeting with why with the one? That's certainly in terms of uh, transparency and accountability will be an approach to take is to as you stated work in concert but not just you know be a recipient of what is given so um, how do you intend to address the issue of ranking institution because there are a lot of schools, like one of the senators said, you will see this school is charging this much, the other school is charging this much, but there's no standard, no ranking to know how to do that. And I know the major education was doing that kind of program, but there was no reason. I don't intend to do that. If you permit me, um, I think I may have um, answered that question. Thank you. Uh, what do you make of, first, let me ask you another question. Are you lawyer behind me? Very much so. Do yes. you respect the law? Yes. So every law passed by this legislature, you want to uphold it? As a citizen, that's my responsibility. So are you going to uphold the education we have? As it is, yes. And I know there's some um, legislations that have been put forward uh, by the Until those are in there, yes. are you going to implement what is there? Yes. So are you going to implement that if we, uh, each county will have a own budget on education? Is that what is in the law? If that is what is in the law, that is what we're going to work towards. Are you going to empower the educational board each county? Is that what is in the law? If that is what is in the law, that's what it has to be. Yes, sir. Thank you. Is that what you
for whatever reason they have to do that. I don't know, but I think it's just too much that all the county's budget is domiciled under the minister's office. So we've got to be looking at that. So again, given what I've heard and seen in your own profile, I think you are better suited uh, to take on the challenge. It's going to be challenging, and I will urge our colleagues. If you are confirmed, we we'll also rally around you. Because education is everybody's business. Thank you. can only happen in the appropriate resources 
and the timely delivery of those resources are made available. Not only relying on county and district education officers, but the principals in the schools to do the walkthrough in those various classrooms and seeing teachers um, teaching who are on payroll requires um, a collective effort. So in that respect regarding monetary and supervision, that's my mindset in how that will be approached. Um, in other countries, the minister determine I mean, the cost of uh, registration and school fees that our neighboring country here that um, compare ourselves to. Yeah, they tell you how much money each teacher, whether private school or government school, how much you're going to charge. Can you develop that system? And in developing that system, you must first of all be able to know the number of teachers you have in the schools. Can you take a lead in verifying all of the teachers in the Republic of Liberia uh, in finding a permanent solution to that problem? Yes, sir, I certainly will take on that task. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I've already seen that, so I rest. Thank you, love. Chairman, do you agree? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. And uh, congratulations, Mr. Uh, Nominee, for your performance. I'm going to chair representing the county of China. Madam Chair, in a nutshell, how will you describe the educational system of our country? In a nutshell, how will you describe the educational system of our country? In a nutshell, and I think I've addressed this question uh, previously. Okay. Yes. Uh, sorry. Okay. Okay. Is um, there are gains that have been made? I stated earlier, um, I'm a product of the library education system. Um, we know the war has set our country back, Ebola, COVID-19. So all of those created shocks to our system impacting our educational sector. Better still, I'm encouraged because the will of the people to see our education sector strengthen, the support of lawmakers to know the importance of education, the president's commitment to revitalizing um, our education system are all prudent um, to ensuring the education sector is strengthened. So there are some weakness, weaknesses. Um, I, we, we discussed that at length. Teacher training, teacher quality, um, you know, teacher compensation, the issue with um, pensioning of teachers and not being able to fill the gaps uh, the issue of volunteer teachers. So the, the challenges are many, uh, but I'm not discouraged because I know the will of the people is to see a better future for this country, and we can only do that through education. So can I then follow up to say that uh, I want to ask that uh, you are not set apart with uh, where we are or where the system is in terms of quality. If that is uh, all right, uh, what is your definition of quality? And um, can we achieve uh, quality education and evaluation by the Ministry of Education? I will take on the charge to do so. My definition of quality is that every Liberian student is well read, is competent, is technically proficient. And those are the standards I look for when I think of quality. Teachers are trained and proper, properly credentialed to be in the classroom. School facilities are not substandard. They are in the, 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 the conditions to encourage student learning. Those are elements that I look for as I think quality. So education. Do you prefer to have that quality uh, 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 throughout uh, the country, not just in one area of the country? Yes, 
So maybe by two so, minutes so we are, are you by one minute. One minute. One more minute. One more minute. Okay. okay. So are you aware, or has it come to your attention, that there are far more teachers in Motorado than uh, you have a county than they are in uh, far away counties? For example, for example, the study, including my county, sign. Are you aware of that? I am oh, aware with, with some preliminary numbers, as um, was stated from the 2021 uh, school census that was done. So undertaking the next school census will give me a full picture of those numbers. So what is your preliminary understanding uh, concerning that problem? What's, 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 what's responsible for that? What's, respons excuse, what's responsible for, for that problem? For the problem of? For that inequity, more teachers in Montevideo, uh, in Kitchen County, fewer teachers in uh, Fireway County. It's the, it's the rural areas, right? So you want to encourage folks who are going into the rural areas uh, with not only, you know, incentivizing and making sure they have enough, you know, uh, or, or adequate facilities to live and teach. So it's looking at those um, structures that are uh, that will encourage a teacher to want to go into the rural areas. That has been one of the predominant reasons why teachers wouldn't want to go in the rural areas because of the challenges they face um, in getting their work done. So have you hope to address Thank you, Dr. Finally, finally, how do we hope to address Yeah, I'm, I, yeah, I, I want to be here with you. Yeah, address that question will go to the next yeah. speaker, please. It's it's looking at the um, salary structure. One is looking at the the um, courses. For example, teachers are teaching. Um, it's also looking at um, funding that's available to support the needed um, uh, restructure to what's available for teachers that we want to deploy in in the rural areas. Thank you, Mr. Chairman of this all powerful guy. Uh, I will have one question for you, Madam Dominique, if I'm objective, if I'm here. Let me stand up and be on my feet to honor you. I want to honor you on behalf of the family. For the, for the well level education you have, you are the first in our family to get PhD. Recuse yourself. Order, 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 and go first and thank you, my Mr. President, for nominating you based on your credential and your hard work that you have earned. Uh, there are no doubts, and there's not in my mind, that you equal this great task. Because there is a precedent, there is a path to this game. The position you have had, what you have done with them, the record is there. To be a vice president in a, in a white male country, I'm sure you can do better in a black male country. Uh, I have one question. That's very good. My brother in law is going to be a very when I came here, you can be as disruptive as you can. Order, please. Order, please. Order, please. Order, please. Continue with your, with your one question. When I came to this Senate, I said, I want to read your view on our channel. Before you, before you, before you, before you, as you want to come back in. Order, please. Order, please. Order, please. Yes, People who come from out with this run. Those of you who believe behavior help, smart kids will take their tests and finish points. 
And they drop their friends. <laughs> yeah, I want to ask that why we should drop them. <laughs> All right, please. Uh, well, the the question I have is, uh, I have a question about the Horace one. The president in his speech, in his annual message, set up a, a committee, giving the, the drug coach in our country. He set up a committee of several ministries, but your ministry is not named. It might be an oversight. My origin as a forerunner to the drug program in this country. Can you go back and look at the school program? We used to have no to drugs in the schools. But now we set down the drug program in this country. So it would be a good idea, even though the Ministry of Education should have been there, but you can initiate on your own to have a program embedded in the extracurricular program that students can know about drugs, say no to drugs, and if possible, it can be vigorously monitored. That way, their education can be sound and sound. Let me tell you once again. You may ask a question. I said,
and they bribe teachers in order for them to pass. And I say that, I tell you because I have a lot of them living with me, living with relatives, and I don't see them studying at all. And how is it possible you don't study, but then you can read or create sheet with new marks? It's not possible. Something is wrong with our school system. I want you to pay key note to that. Also, I'd like you to discuss with, your, with the president that nominated you. That when submitting the budget, and I'm speaking to you as the vice chair on the committee of ways, means, finance, and the budget, that this budget should not be submitted only from his office, but rather to include your input as Minister of Education in order for us to fight the issue that we have in our, in our educational system. Many of the time during the past regime, budget come to us, and when we, one time I asked the police director when I was the representative for Sango County, some three years ago, or two years ago, I asked him, Mr. Inspector General, this budget that you have come to talk about, are you part of it? Did you know of its composition? And he bluntly told me, no, Honorable Representative. So I would like you to be participating because our educational system is a security, a national security issue. Our children that we are leaving this country with, right now we are on the stage. Government is about acting. We are on the acting stage. And we will leave this stage. All of us will not be here in the next 18 years. Who are we leaving our country with when our children are not in the line of liking education? They don't like school anymore. They don't. It is bad. Our country is drowning. So please take note of those things and uh, be able to watch on them. Thank you. And I'm proud of you. Very proud. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. After the co chair, I will make the final remark and we'll close the session. Mine will not be too long. Again, uh, Madam Lovely, thank you very much for the kind of qualification you are bringing to the table. I happen to be a member of the 54th Education Committee of the Senate. So there are a lot of things that I observe, and I just want to bring them to your knowledge. What do you know about them? The current education law that offers free education to students in the primary, that from first grade all the way to 12th grade, does not include the pre-primary. I don't know whether you are aware. And because of that, in my county, Grand Crew, the cakes that are supposed to feed the first grade, second grade, third grade, are being disadvantaged. When you go ask, my mother not get money, my father not get money, people can to intervene. I think it's very key. You need to look at it, work with the legislation to see that that sector is also included. Very, very important. My other concern is teacher and teaching is a very touching profession preparing the future of the country. So it's not anybody that can teach. You have to be trained. That is why our government has the Soso Teacher Training Institute, Kakata Rural Teacher Training Institute, and the Wemo Rural Training. But those three are currently almost non-existent. And because of that, you have people calling other mixture teaching uh, professional schools called Nagose, the other one, they call. So they train people in the that in the first grade. They're praying for first grade. And when you go low, they get a C certificate. I went to C certificate in Sosa. I spent one year, whole year going to school. You need to look at that and make sure that those schools that are intended to train teachers are very, are highly supported and play their role 
for which they were created. I also want to ask you, Madam, we got the defect that is taken care of and uh, that is intended to take care of our will you know, this program that needs to be supported by the legislature financially to handle the defect. Let me give my last question so you can answer together. I know you talk about teachers being paid through mobile money. It was intended to ease the difficulties of paying teachers, especially those in the rural areas. Yeah. But Madam is being exploited as soon as the, the, those teachers get their money through the mobile money, the in you will never see them in the rural area. And how to track the money now, they already in their mobile money. They get it. You need to look at it. Very, very serious affecting our rural schools that we represent here. These are the three things I wanted to uh, tell you. Okay. If you. If you can answer the one that you think you need to answer, if you know, answer the question. Thank you, Honorable Senator. Um, insightful comments on some of the things that I need to be looking at um, as it relates to support to early um, primary education. Um, the TTIs and their um, equipping to teach and, and, and provide certifications, overhaul the regulations of schools that are providing training uh, to uh, uh, teachers and um, looking at also how do we monitor teachers who have been paid in the rural area to, to, to stay in the rural areas and do that which um, they have been paid to do. Again, as I stated earlier, I think I was answering uh, one of the senator's uh, questions is the monitoring of, of teachers cannot only rely on CEOs, DEOs. Principals in the schools need to be more accountable. A school report card need to be generated to gauge performances and who's in the classroom. Disciplinary actions need to be taken against folks who are hired to teach and are not doing what they're supposed to do. So your collective um, points have been well noted and we'll, be, um, for, we'll form the review of some of the things that needs uh, to be prioritized. Thank you. Distinguished colleague, thank you very much, Madam. Nominee. Please ask a question for me. Please ask a question now, we into a daughter of seven school. Yeah. 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 I mean, the recommendation, correct? Is that a question? I don't see it. Uh, thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam Nominee. Uh, uh, I don't see that as a question. I see as a recommendation. I want to thank you. You've been here very long. You have exhaustively answered most of the questions. Uh, I think this has been a marathon for you. Uh, this has been a marathon. Uh, this committee has taken you for the last one. I think three hours now you've been sitting here all day. Thank you. Yeah, you answered some of the questions. You met with me in my office. Uh, we, we had a prior discussion. I want to thank you for your insight and education. Like I said to you, this committee is not, it's not going to be a committee I'll be sitting now. This committee is going to be on the feed before we make policy decisions, before we make recommendations, especially when it comes to support financially, we want to go to be and see some of the things. And most of the senators have said things that we, we agree with. We believe that there should be free education. Our young librarian children, like you said, on Article 6, the government librarian is going to provide math education. And we're not just talking about math education, we're talking about math and quality education. So we want to thank you. We want to support you. It's our responsibility to provide financial support, like you said. And I'm happy that most of the senators here have been given the opportunity to ask you questions. They've shown their passion for education. It is now our responsibility to bring the financial resources to bear on education and see how you, the administrator, will handle the education system of our country. I want to thank you also for making sure that you are giving high, high, high attention to our volunteer teachers. Uh, we not only talk about volunteer teachers, we talk about quality teachers who can be on payroll. How we can make sure the disparity 
the training among professional teachers are also addressed. I want to thank you. But there's a few questions I want to ask you before I conclude. The each of the World Bank program, the each of the World Bank program, are you aware how much money we spent? Have you have you been briefed by the ministry in terms of how much money have been spent the World Bank program, uh, the different program in terms of World Bank, EU and UC? Are you have any knowledge? I do. Um, I had a preliminary engagement with the World Bank. Um, they shared with me the portfolio um, of uh, various projects that they currently are supporting in the Ministry of Education. Um, one just completed was the previous Get Into Best, and they're now on the, the phase that is at six months to expiration, and a new concept note is being developed for the next project, for which I will be a part of to review to make sure that we have things that we need. The, can you confirm that? Show the guy your vote. I will be part of if confirmed. I will be part of if confirmed. Yeah. Thank you, sir. My, my nominee, the, the World Bank program, one of the, one of the problems I've been having is that when we talk about 26% of, of the budget to education, for instance, you said education has 15%, correct, in the last budget. Now, if you have a program, you have a national program, whereby most of the program, these donor, pro these donor organizations are supporting. For instance, my understanding the World Bank project is around 100 million. Are you aware of that? I'm not uh, keen on the percentage uh, right now, but I know it's in excess okay. of So that. one of the things we we'll suggest to you, if confirmed, is to make sure we, 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 we we harmonize the program, the, the donor program, with the national program in terms of budget support. Because if you have 100 million or 200 million in donor funding coming to education, we want to see how, what that component, what percentage of that component is attached to the national budget to get the 26 percent threshold. So that we're not we're not overdoing things, we're not overlapping things. Government spend on the same program, then donors spend on the same program. So I would like you to take into consideration of that. And this committee will be working very closely with the entire educational sector. And like I said again, our committee will not be sitting in the office. We'll be working with all the educational stakeholders. We'll be on the feed. I want to, I'm excited that you want to be on the feed. We'll go from school to school, from school district to school district to see what is happening. So I want to thank you for the time and for being very patient, for answering all the signs of questions. And I want to say to you, we ask the sergeant arms to discharge you. And if need be, we invite you. But the decision of this committee will be translated to the plenary. And for the plenary, the appropriate authority will inform the president. Thank you very much. And we wish you all the best. Thank you. But now I the sergeant arms to dis discharge the nominee. And thanks on behalf of the committee. Part of my position, I'm captain of the Lebanon Forest. And the power extended by the chairman and member of the committee.